The following podcast is a production of the p o d p i e Network. Find and listen to our podcasts at the p o d p i e Network dot com or wherever you enjoy your podcast. The p o d p i e Network, a family of inspired podcasts. What is going on, Sibel? Hey yo, hey yo! How you doing, baby? <laughs> hey, baby! Hey, baby! That, that's the face we've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, how are you, man? I'm How's good. I'm good, buddy. How are you? Really excited. Really, really excited. Just, just coming off the uh, the high of our first uh, episode yeah. ever of Hairbrain Schemes. Yes, sir. Right? Thank uh, you for everyone who listened in. That was super absolutely. nice. Absolutely. Well done. Absolutely, absolutely. The feedback has been just really, really positive. And yeah. you know, when you're starting a new project like we are, Sibel, right? It, it's really, really important to get that feedback. For sure. Uh, and you kind of cross your fingers and toes and hope that the feedback is positive. Um, but you know, in our case, it's been overwhelmingly positive. I have not received a single negative, you know, bit of feedback from anyone who's taken the time to listen. So again, we really, really want to say thank you because mm-hmm. we we just get to we just get to have fun oh, doing yeah. this stuff, right? Yeah. And we package it as this. This is a normal conversation for us, and we get to package that and get you to listen to that. And that's just to me, that's that's awesome. Right? So yeah, it's yeah. it's amazing. Most of the Feedback I've gotten has been one word in all caps, which is Alfred. <laughs> and um, I, I'm taking I that as surprised? a positive. I'm taking that as a positive. I, you know what? If you if you learn nothing else from our from our podcast, you will learn the word Alfred and at least a hundred <laughs> different ways to yell it out at the most. In opportune moments, that's that's what you're going to get listening to this podcast. Amen, sure. amen, amen, yeah. amen. I amen. stand by we that. We are. <laughs> I stand by that. We are su- super thrilled to be doing another, uh, you know, uh, episode and bringing this to you. Yes, sir. And um, today on Hairbrain Schemes, uh, we are going to be talking about a certain Sir, Sir Walter Raleigh. Raleigh. Sir Walter Raleigh. This story, uh, if we can get Sibel to focus. <laughs> focusing. All right, I'm focusing. Jeez. All right, boss. All right. All right. Jeez, get off my back. <laughs> God. You get distracted Goodness. for five minutes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, Sorry. Yes. Sir Walter yeah, Raleigh. Yeah, no. Exactly. So uh, this dude, I mean, this story is quite a doozy, right? Oh, this yeah. Is yeah, this one is hilarious, entertaining, and a bit sad too. Mm. So uh, I guess you know, you know what, you you know what I'm finding, Sabelle, is most really, really good comedy mm-hmm. um, would have just a hint of sadness to it, right? Of course, because this, yeah, because the sadness is it provides the necessary contrast so that the 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 hilarious ha ha bits. Stand out more. It's kind of like you cannot. It, it, there's a reason why you use white chalk on a blackboard. You know what I mean? For sure. Uh, because if you're putting black on black, you can't really, you know, you can't really see it. There's no contrast. But the sadness, I think, you know, just adds that hint of, you know, something different that makes the funny bits extra funny, right? Yeah, is, I is think it's. I completely agree. agree. It's like it's a bittersweet thing. Humor. Right. It's right. things are always a bit funnier when you're laughing despite how bad things are. Exactly. So there is exactly. something to be said about the almost sense of relief that can come mm-hmm. with laughing about a moment of lightheartedness in something that maybe mm-hmm. is not all positive. And that's the reality that's of most right. stories, isn't it? There's no such thing as right. a perfectly right. happy story. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm very excited yeah. about this one. I'm actually, uh, can I go off for a second on? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I was just, I was gonna say the thing I'm really loving about this uh, today's podcast is that there are all these super interesting names. So in today's podcast, yeah. we will hear Sir Walter Raleigh, Elizabeth Throckmorton, Don Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa, Don Antonio de Paris, 
El Dorado, the Guyana Highlands on the upper reaches of the Orinoco River. It's just going to be right. so much fun saying all of it's these words. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, a lot of fun. Yeah. So There's your trailer to get into for today's it. episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's just words in accents. Yes. We're done. Yes. All right. <laughs> We're done. That's that's the episode. That's the episode. We'll see y'all <laughs> no, later. Really, uh, we'll see y'all next week. No, no. But really, this is this is a story of you know a guy who, from a lot of accounts, was devilishly handsome, very intelligent. You know, uh, someone who spoke his mind and someone who was not afraid to offend the queen. The queen. Sometimes the queen. The queen. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, you and I were talking, um, you know, just before we hit record, Sibel. Yes. And I was saying how- We do talk sometimes something before recording. We do talk. <laughs> we do talk. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, something that stuck with me, um, you know, from just reading these historical books and watching some of these period pieces that had to do with, you know, the court and royalty and, and, and stuff like that, um, is how quickly- you can fall out of favor, right? Because right. one moment you're the closest confidant to the king or queen, and the next moment someone has whispered, you know, some stuff in their ear, and it's off with his head. Right, you're it dancing is, on the knife's edge the entire time. Right, it's a high exactly. risk, high reward thing. It's a high pressure situation. Yeah. I now, do you think you could live like that, Sibel? I mean, it's I got think to be. it must be. It, it's it must be for a very unique type of individual. Frankly, right, I mean, right. for example, we'll get into the the details, but Sir Walter right. ended up in the Tower of London twice, 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 twice. Um, <laughs> And then still made it back into the court after that. That is just ridiculous. Um, right, right. No, so that is so, not a so life I think. It's I, so, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not sure that's a life yeah. I'd want to live. That just seems there's way no, there's too no, There's stressful. no job security. <laughs> job sec- there's no life security. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, and for those of you, you know, listening from wherever, you know, just so you know, the Tower of London, you know, was was like, a, it was that was prison, right? So it was not, he was not under house arrest, or he was not put up in a fancy hotel called the Tower of London. This was prison. Yep. Uh, and so um, this guy ended up there uh, twice. We're going to tell you why and how. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, enough of the preamble. Let's talk about Sir Walter Raleigh. And I want to begin by going straight to biography.com. Um, sure. And it, it says, historians believe Raleigh was born in 1552 or possibly 1554 because, you know, not the most accurate. Yes. Suggestions enough. back then. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and grew up in a farmhouse uh, near the village of East Budley in Devon. Okay, the Definitely. youngest of five sons. Exactly. The youngest of five sons born to Catherine Champamon. So that's the first, you know, that's the first five unique sons. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard a person named Champamon? Champamon. Right? Champa. Champamon. That's Champa. that's quite It's quite, the, quite name. the name. Yeah, it doesn't right. quite roll off the tongue. No, 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 but you know, for this episode, we had to learn the pronunciation of quite a few names quite like a that. Few. So, yes, uh, the youngest of five sons born to Catherine Champerman. No wonder he was so ambitious. The youngest of five sons, <laughs> you're, you're probably yeah. fighting for food at that point. Uh, <laughs> Scrapping, you know, uh, yeah. So, so in two successive marriages, his father, Walter Raleigh, so his father was also named Walter Raleigh. Okay. Like young Raleigh, his relatives, Sir Richard Grenville and Sir Humphrey Gilbert, were prominent during the reigns of Elizabeth I and James I. Raised as a devout Protestant, uh, Raleigh's family faced persecution under Queen Mary I, a Catholic, and as a result, young Raleigh developed a lifelong hatred for Roman Catholicism. Yes, okay. it is. It's so fascinating that the mm-hmm. thing that radicalized him as a young man was the yeah. was the fights between the Protestants and the Catholics yeah. in yeah. England. But yeah, it sounds like there were almost purges. 
Yeah, I mean, for, for, to, 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 to read a lot of these, you know, uh, you know, bits of research that we had to do uh, yeah. coming into the episode, it, it did seem like it was a horrible time to not be a Catholic, right, in right. England, right? Yeah. Um, you know, there were purges, and especially under Queen, you know, Mary, uh, you know, the first, she was, you know, she was big on being Catholic, and if you, if there was even a hint of you not trying to be Catholic, you were a Protestant or anything else, uh, you either got killed or you had your titles and land and all that stripped away. Right. Um, it, it was quite, it was, it was bad. It was, right. it was really bad. And, Truly uh, a believer in cleansing of the land. As it yeah, were. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Thank goodness, you know, the human race has come a long way from that and we don't do anything like that anymore oh absolutely not nowhere right? absolutely right? that never happens <laughs> nowhere anywhere today 2021 yeah. nowhere in the no world violence. is that happening no no no, no. no we violence wouldn't, we wouldn't think no of discrimination it, right? whatsoever no discrimination of, of any kind no right? because no. we've learned our lesson from from history from history correct yes correct yeah, yeah okay absolutely yeah goodness gracious absolutely <laughs> goodness. okay <laughs> <laughs> if only that were true. Right. Um, so, you know, by 17, this dude was fighting in France uh, with the Huguenots, right? That's right. the French Protestants uh, in the wars of religion. Right. right? Um, and in 1572, he attended Oriel College, Oxford, and studied Oriel law. College, Oxford. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Law. At the Middle Temple Law College. Uh, mm-hmm. So during this time, he began his lifelong interest in writing poetry. So again, um, People ask, you know, why is this guy such a recurring figure? Um, because you know, he amongst, did like you know, a ton of things, including because he did poetry. like a ton of things, and and that's that's quite common um, with people who lived in in that in that period. Is they did a lot of things. Like the term Renaissance man, when when you think about these people, mm-hmm. is is quite literal, and and they did math, and they did science, and they did art, and they right. did. You know, just a bunch of things, right? And so, yeah. you know, this dude was no different. Uh, he, he started writing poetry, and he was quite good at it. And uh, some of his poetry is still, uh, you know, you can find some of that stuff online today. It's it's quite good. Yeah. I'll take your so, word on that. I haven't read it any of myself, but I'll have to look it up. Right. right. Yeah. Right. No, you should. You should. He was also, you know, quite the student of math because apparently, you know, he was big on exploration, right? Right. Um, Makes and, sense. And, and naval navigation. And so, um, you know, math was quite the tool, right? He Absolutely. He was very, very big on developing, you know, you know, uh, theories and math and, and trying to figure out how things work. So we've got a warrior who is also a poet. Mm-hmm. Who is also a mathematician? Who is also a navigator? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Amongst other things. Amongst and, other and things. Quite the politician too, right? Quite the politician, as you will find, right? Yeah. Uh, now his politics might not have always, you know, uh, uh, been the best thing for his health, uh, but yeah. he was quite the politician as well. Right. <laughs> right. So. Right. <laughs> Right. So he was probably in court uh, all the time as well at, at a certain point. Um, and we will get there. So Raleigh, Raleigh. Uh, you know, Raleigh, Raleigh. Uh, was, 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 was quite the brilliant young chap, right? Uh, and still from biography.com, it says, between 1579 and 1583, mm-hmm. Raleigh fought in the service of Queen Elizabeth I, in Ireland, distinguishing himself with his ruthlessness at the siege of Schmowick, right? And establishing, mm-hmm, and, is, and establishing British, English, and Scottish Protestants in Munster. So it says he was tall, handsome, and superbly self-confident, and he rose rapidly in Queen Elizabeth I's court upon his return and quickly became a favorite. So yeah, this is opening. This is opening. This is a good opening to you know a lot of speculation that that you know Sabelle and I were kind of going back and forth. Yes, 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 yes. This is what we were debating. We were like, we were like, he got Did this guy all... just rise through the ranks. You know, yeah, he just makes he becomes incredibly rich because mm-hmm. he keeps getting into these very influential positions. 
Mm-hmm. Elizabeth I keeps basically mm-hmm. giving him lands and titles. Right, right. right. Uh, he's apparently a and don't forget, handsome, and don't forget. intelligent warrior. <laughs> and then we know she gets jealous later on. I'm and just don't saying. forget, Elizabeth, Elizabeth I was notoriously repressed because she was the she virgin a, queen. She took, she took an oath of virginity. Yeah, exactly. The virgin so, queen. At, yeah. At, exactly. And so it, this, there's a lot of emphasis here on. 